Hello viewers, you're watching the Wild Lifestyle Show. On the Wild Lifestyle Show, you learn about everything lifestyle that impacts on the general health and well-being. Today we are discussing your lifestyle and your health. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. My name is Helena. A brave African queen fought many battles to protect her family from hungry mosquitoes that may carry malaria parasites. Until one day, she discovered something new. Discover new raid day and night, three sprays on one poster for 24-hour mosquito protection for the whole family. The future of mosquito protection is here. The revolution will be peaceful. Raid day and night. It's good to be tough. SC Johnson, a family company. Memory. Coordination. Confidence. You put more into your baby's development than you think. And now you can put more into every meal time. Cerulac combines iron, vitamin C, and probiotics to support physical and mental development. Nestle Cerulac, now with Iron Plus. Big nutrition for small tummies. Welcome back, my beautiful wake up. My makeup, my nails were done by AJ Hair and Makeovers. You can find them at East Legon, Uponglo. They share the same building as Echo Bank. And my beautiful dress was designed by Loretta Unisex Designs. You can call her for all kinds of beautiful dresses. You can find them at Osuko Komlimli and East Legon. We have one of my most sorted after resource persons, Mr. Wise Chukudi. Lecha. He's a principal dietitian at the Trust Hospital and Clinics, and he's the author of Eating to Prevent and Manage Lifestyle Diseases and also Answers to Your Diet. Do well to get one of these books because it will change your life and offer you good health. Mr. Lecha, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm very glad to have you. Whenever I have you on my show, I get a lot of phone calls, so, <laughs> so please don't leave us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are talking about um, your lifestyle and your health. What has lifestyle got to do with our health? Yeah. So lifestyle, um, as you know, every day when we wake up, we wake up to live. And we always thank God for a healthy life, or for life, let me put it that way. And uh, when you step into the day, the things you do, that is your lifestyle, uh, they have both positive and negative effects on our health. Um, popular among them is the food we eat. Uh, if you refuse to walk or exercise, if you don't sleep well, if you keep a dirty environment, you get malaria. And it can, the list can go on and on. Yeah, but then we can, uh, we see the impact of uh, the, our food, especially, and the lack of exercise uh, when we go to work, because the nature of the job is involves sitting. You go sit from morning to evening, and that in itself is a health risk. If you sit too long in a day, you will die earlier than your time, mm. you see. And then... Too long is how long? <laughs> if, if, if you are sitting more than two hours uh, at a stretch, True. you are reducing your the lifespan. The production team said it. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually reducing right. your lifespan by right. some minutes. So see. please, they have to so, uh, uh, take short breaks in exactly. between the longer, so, because that's all people do at work. Exactly. Section. And the, the only antidote we have uh, to some of the dangers associated with um, our lifestyle is to um, um, design our lifestyle again in a way that will help the situation. So we can't say that we'll not go to work. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we go, we have to now think about our health and then plan such that the things we do every day, the fact that we are sitting, the fact that we may not have access to home cooked food and all that will not impact negatively on our health. Okay. So what are some of the lifestyle diseases? So I started by mentioning dirty environment, choked gutters, and malaria. Mm. It's something that uh, still worries us. The same dirty environment, choked gutters, and cholera. Anytime there are rainfall, the, the rainfalls, we uh, have a lot of people reporting to the OPDs. And then the, the diseases like diabetes are just on the increase um, in, our, in our society these days. Hypertension. Um, on the increase, um, obesity. Now 
mostly almost one out of four people <laughs> you see on our street Very um, bad. Uh, are obese. Then even our children are um, so uh, fat these days. Um, and if only those conditions were to occur in isolation, probably the problems associated uh, or the deaths especially associated with them, the loss of quality life associated with them might not be as w w rife as it is. But then they come and then they bring their siblings along. So if you have hypertension, then you can develop stroke. If you have diabetes, you can get amputated. If you have diabetes, you can have stroke or blindness. So they lead to a lot of deaths because of their complications, that's the, the right term, or the problems that they bring along, you see. Uh, that is the situation. Nowadays, uh, people just have to check their blood cholesterol and it will be high. I mean, when we sit in the clinic, we see um, almost everybody you are seeing, they mm -hmm. have high blood cholesterol. It's become so common, perhaps because people are um, undergoing medical screening uh, more, more these, these days. days. It's prerequisite for job employment. And then people are more health conscious. We also have the facilities nowadays to check these things. But I think that, let me cut you here, with um, high blood cholesterol, people need to understand that it's not about being overweight or obese exactly. because yes. they tend to relate it to fat, like fat. being overweight, more than the type of fat or lifestyle exactly. that a person In fact, body image uh, in itself, how you look, whether slim or big, uh, has a lot of cultural underpinnings. And in our society here, um, if you are slim, there's trouble. You are not being good <laughs> taken, uh, your, your, your spouse is not taking good care of, of you, or they are giving you trouble. So you think then you are uh, losing weight. If you are fat, you are again discriminated against right from childhood. I mean, you can remember the fat kids in our class, we used to call them Obolo. Those of us who were smallish, they used to bully us around, you see. So any side of the divide that you belong, you have a uh, social stigma and all that associated with it. <laughs> but then health, uh, these lifestyle diseases are um, associated with body size, but body size is not a cause um, of, of the conditions. Um, the fact that somebody is big, someone can have a BMI of 40, that is morbid obesity. Um, the weight in itself, even if the person has no other condition, the excess weight in itself is a health risk, it can even cause death. Uh, but then such a person can even have very normal blood pressure, very normal cholesterol level, like mm -hmm. you put it mm -hmm. rightly. So it's true that people should stop thinking that it's fat people or obese people uh, that have problems with um, uh, okay. Cholesterol, for example. If you have very poor quality diet, bad food, your cholesterol will be high. If you don't exercise, your cholesterol will be high. Okay. So I want us to take um, these diet-related conditions one by one okay. and then look at how they are directly related to diet and how, I mean, people can change so that it be, I mean, it, they improve their health or they prevent some of these lifestyle diseases. So we started with cholesterol. Is there anything yeah. you want to add or we can move on to? Yeah, so um, I, I, just, I just feel wish that everybody will screen for cholesterol in right. our country today. Uh, you know, when you go to the hospital, they check your blood pressure and that's a screening mechanism put in place. So those whose BPs are rising, they are detected. But that's those who tend to be sick and go to the to, hospital. Of course, of mm -hmm. course. But then uh, not everybody who is sick and goes to the hospital that has the cholesterol uh, level checked. But I just wish that we all decide to check because people re uh, report to um, hospitals with mouth strokes and strokes and all that. And then doctors find out that they had history um, of um, high cholesterol, mm. which is not detected. Um, and cholesterol is such that if it's high, it will not make your body warm or it will not it make right. your head ache you. Silent it has killer. no, <laughs> that's why they call it the silent killer. So that should be my message to anyone listening to us. Just well, let's look at, I mean, I mean, what could give a rise in blood cholesterol, blood cholesterol. so that they yeah, know? There, there, are, there are several factors, even your, your genetic makeup, there's genetic hyperlipidemia. Right. Um, you are born with the uh, <laughs> tendency, uh, tendency to have high cholesterol. Uh, so for such people, if you hear that your father ever mentioned that, oh, they said my cholesterol is high, you have to check. Or even uh, when stroke, you have someone Exactly, who you, you have such disabilities, you should check your cholesterol. And then the food. For cholesterol, even mm. if you don't eat, <laughs> 
and you are fasting so much, your cholesterol will go up. It's because, good you brought up fasting because um, these days now we tend to advocate for intermittent fasting. Yes. So I would like us to elaborate on that when we come yes. from so, a quick break. Okay. So we'll be right back and we'll talk more about intermittent fasting. Tired of all the old ways of fighting mosquitoes? Discover the new rate day and night. Three sprays on one poster for 24-hour mosquito protection for the whole family. The future of mosquito protection. Raid day and night. It's good to be tough. Introducing Cerelac Biscuity, the new baby cereal from Cerelac, with a great new biscuity taste that babies absolutely love. And of course, it's fortified with iron to support babies' healthy growth, just like all the other nutritious Cerelac flavors. Cerelac, big nutrition for small tummies. Welcome back. Optimum Nutrition Care Consult is happy to provide you with all your nutrition and health education, nutritional assessments. If you are struggling with any diet-related condition like high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, if you want to lose weight, just call 50 151 We've been talking about your lifestyle and your health. What kind of lifestyle are you leading? Is it going to provide you with good health? or it's going to make you sick. We are continuing with our conversation. So why is we on fasting, the fact that fasting can impact on cholesterol levels. And I brought in intermittent fasting because I want our viewers to understand what we mean by intermittent fasting and how to fast in such a way that it doesn't affect our health or it doesn't impact negatively. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really uh, yet to come to terms with the fact that uh, fasting who not impact negatively on most of the lifestyle diseases. Okay. Yeah, because I manage these people on a daily basis and um, their indices are not improved if they engage in fasting. But then there is a lot of school. What do you mean? Um, sufferers of, or people who suffer from high cholesterol, okay. diabetes, and there are complications okay. with um, obese people kidney disease, liver, okay. But you've seen some papers that. that have shown that... Oh, yeah, oh yes, okay. yes. So I was just talking about okay, one side of that. the divide. <laughs> that I am yet to come to, to come terms by. with the fact that there's a certain kind of fasting mm. that can uh, help this uh, kind of conditions. But then, you know, um, the way we use food and the way we eat to manage conditions um, has a lot to do with the culture of the people and then the kind of foods that are available and the society in itself, even the economy and all that. So if a group of people somewhere have a certain way of eating or doing things that supports their health, you cannot lift it whole and then bring it to maybe your setting and uh, implement it and get the same result. Mm. Uh, if you even want to adapt such practices, you may have to modify it to suit your own cultural and uh, economic underpinnings, you see. So what I see, uh, mostly is when people don't eat regularly. Their cholesterol levels go up. There's this thing called intermittent fasting that people do for various reasons, weight management and all that. Uh, as the word goes, intermittent, uh, they fast in between their meals, like periods that they should have eaten. They can skip certain meals, but all in all, within the 24 hours or so, they have a piece of food, um, a little amount of food, and then stay without food um, for, for example, let me just cite an example. You can choose to eat in the morning. Or let me put it down. You wake up the whole day, you not eat. And then you have maybe half a bowl of kinky in the afternoon. And then you wait till the following day before you eat something. So you that's see? what people do that's with intermittent exactly, fasting. Exactly. Exactly. People can even go days without fasting. And then other variations, people take uh, foods that are different from what they are used to. So you are used to eating watching in the morning. Um, and kinky in the afternoon, fufu in the evening. But you engage in fasting by changing the wache or replacing the wache with just plain tea. You, you just brew maybe uh, Lipton or any form of tea and drink like that. Okay. So if you look at the difference, then a plain cup of tea will give you zero, near to zero calories. Mm -hmm. So your body now recognizes the fact that you have not put in so much energy then if that goes on for a period, Hello. definitely there'll be a change in the body. But I want us all to understand that anytime we don't eat, our body feeds us. Um, the body is one of the most perfect, or is the only perfect 
machine that you can even find on earth. Mm. Uh, what it needs, if you don't give to it, to make it. So the brain needs glucose and you are not, you've not eaten. So there's no free flowing glucose in the blood to be absorbed. And perhaps your last meal uh, has been so many hours away. So the body doesn't even have any glycogen stores to fall on. It's broken down all the glycogen and my, um, the, the, the glucose in the muscles and all that. Now it must make the glucose. So in the liver, reactions will take place for that glucose to be, to be cooked, let me put it that way, and then supplied to the brain. Now in the process of cooking, even in our kitchen, if you cook okra soup and uh, uh, kita school boys, you have to go and buy the fish, buy okra, tomato and all that. So you mobilize your ingredients, right? Mm. The body must also mobilize its ing ingredients when it's going to make glu glucose. And in that process, a lot of fats and all that will be flowing in your blood. And if your lifestyle is accustomed to that, you do that always, you have problem with cholesterol. Mm. Now, so allowing yourself to feel hungry for too long is a reason why people have high cholesterol. And then the other side is if you eat the wrong things, if you are used to um, eating fried things, you are a candidate for cholesterol. Even the way we cook stew mm. in our Say it again. kitchen every day. <laughs> if I should ask you now how mm. the process involved in your cooking of stew. I've uh, changed. <laughs> <laughs> that same good old way mm. and very convenient way of cooking. You pour mm. the oil there, you pour the fry fried onion. The onion, some will become you feel black. It makes it tastier. Of but course. then when we add the oil at the end. The smell, end. <laughs> the flavor, and all that. That is the norm. But that is a high cholesterol stew. Mm. You see, if you heat your oils, the heat is creating an environment for chemical reactions in right. the oil. So if you go to, into science, which <laughs> we don't want to do over here, mm -hmm. um, the, the good oil, the way most of our vegetable oils are presented in the bottles and all that, mm -hmm. they are healthy for us. But when we keep them on fire for so long, right. the heat destroys the good bones, mm -hmm. the air blowing over it, there's a, a, a oxidation and all that taking place. So the good fats are converted into bad. Right. Then you consume it in your stews. Uh, so that's just the changes that occur in the oil. Now, the quantity of the oil itself. Okay. Most of our stews, you have to swim through the oil to, <laughs> to get some stew. Mm. And that is not good, you see. The more energy you put into your system, the, the, your cholesterol is likely to go up. Mm. So after a meal, a hefty meal, a meal that gives you so much energy, like you take fufu and palm nut soup, drink a lot of the soup. There's so much energy in your system. The body will make a lot of cholesterol. Even if you eat something that has sugar, or drinks, that gives you a lot of energy. You make a lot of cholesterol. So if you listen uh, to me carefully, I mentioned a lot of things, sugar, even sugar, mm, oil, so diabetes the way we too. cook. So sugar is not a, only a problem with diabetics. Cholesterol can also go up if you eat a lot of sugar. And I always have observed <laughs> uh, that, especially from clients' history and all that, that table sugar is, is actually the list of our problems when mm. we come to like sugar and diet mm. and lifestyle diseases. But we because hardly take beverages in the morning these days. If right? we forget about that, even if we take the beverages, mm. if people add sugar to their food, those who add too much sugar are adding like four cubes mm. of sugar, mm. three, four cubes. Mm. Most people will do one or two cubes. But you grab a bottle of soft drink and conveniently enjoying that bottle or any form of uh, recreational drink, uh, sometimes fruit juice and all that. By the time you finish a glass or a bottle, you are taking in more than nine, 10, 12 cubes mm, of sugar. I see. <laughs> you see, so the drinks, if you really, really want to manage your sugar intake and stay healthy, watch what you drink. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. Most of us, a lot, I see a lot of people who uh, are like, I don't eat sugar anymore. Mm. But they are taking the drinks. Mm. Sometimes they eat plenty of fruits. We forget that the thing that makes the fruit sweet is sugar. Like, you oh, see? I take fruit juice. <laughs> or fruits. I mean, and it's also not good to be eating only fruits as your main meal. Mm. Uh, some people practice uh, fruitarianism, like they eat 
fruit alone. Mm. Uh, but then a whole day? A, a whole day, breakfast, lunch, supper. Mm. But then if you continue doing that, really? your body will not... <laughs> yes, there's also the fruit fast that okay. people do, that they are eating only fruits okay. and nothing else. If yes. you do that, your body is not getting fat, mm. your body is not getting right. protein, and it must make, like I told you from the beginning, the body must make what it doesn't get. Mm. And that process, even the byproducts and the ingredients that the body will mobilize can give you more problems, mm. you see. All right. So we are we are going for a quick break. <laughs> I know you have a lot more to say, but we don't have too much time. So let's try to put together what we have to say. We have healthy you segments when we come back. On healthy you segment today, Ediama is asking, um, I had I have high blood sugar. Can I still take fruits? Okay, so why? Since we are talking about lifestyle, I want to give this question to you to answer. Because I know that there's someone who told me a doctor had told them not to eat fruits because they are diabetic. Okay. So do that, you do you agree that no, if you are diabetic, you don't have to eat fruits? No, you need diabetics <laughs> even need fruits more than people who are not diabetic. Mm. So the How answer to is eat their fruits. The answer is yes. <laughs> yes, you can, can have eat. his fruits. Right. But then how to eat it? How like you you put it. it. Uh, fruits have sugar, um, and the kind of sugar in fruits also gets absorbed quickly. Right. That's why even if you're hungry and you eat a piece of fruit, you can feel all right. Um, so just a piece at a time. If it's banana, one or two at a time. Orange, one. You can eat fruit several times in a day, but each time should just be a little right. and that'll be fine. Thank you. Mm. We agree. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think we don't have too much time. So let's quickly look at, we started with high blood cholesterol. I know we talked much about this and the way you explained it is linked to diabetes, high blood pressure and all that. So if we can put them together and look at, yes. um, I mean, some of the things we do that affect right. okay. these conditions and how we can okay. also prevent. So, so I would like to approach it this way. You know, if you... Um, don't have any of the lifestyle conditions. It's a good opportunity to eat in a way that, or live in a way that you can prevent them. So things that we advise people who have the conditions, you should even be practicing them. Mm. You see, diabetics, to, you, you can eat almost everything if you have diabetes. Um, the only thing is, the key is moderation. But before you even start eating, after your, knowing your diagnosis, you have to talk to someone like me, talk to a dietitian, right. so that you can plan for you. But then sitting at home and then having your own restrictions, like saying that you eat cassava fufu and all those things, you eat only plantain, you become malnourished. <laughs> and the malnutrition will give you more serious problems mm. than the diabetes itself, you see. So let's also, for all the lifestyle conditions, let's keep an eye on eating healthy, uh, sorry, well-balanced meals. And a balanced meal is one that, in science, we say will give you all the nutrients, the carbohydrate, protein, fat, minerals, vitamins, and which one did I leave out? Water and the uh, carbs. Did we um, mention fats? Fat, yes. Mm. So, I mean, we know those nutrients. Now, uh, it will be difficult for you to be looking for those nutrients in food. Uh, we even find it difficult making food balanced if you go to the lab trying to do calculations. It's a tough job. But then, simply put, Let's eat more complete meals. Like you said, food, um, ingredients from different food groups. Your plates, quarter, the, if you look at the nine inch plate, plate uh, model, quarter of your plates is covered by the starch, a quarter by the protein, and then half by vegetables, you see? So if it's rice and stew, rice is in the corner somewhere. So people start heaping the, the rice in one corner because I always advise them one corner, but just be true to yourself moderate amounts, then little fish or meat. It's better, Helena, it's better to plan. I mean, there's fish. We have different ways of eating fish. You can grill, you can fry, you can steam, boil the fresh fish. I, I noticed that we don't even like eating fresh fish in our mm. country here. Meanwhile, fresh fish gives us a lot of the omega-3 fatty acids. Right. Which, we don't lose the oils. Like, exactly, when we the fish it oil. Charcoal. Very, very healthy. And then another thing I observe about grilling is if you grill yourself, it's far, far, far healthier. And if you are grilling, don't use too much salt and all that. But if you are so uh, um, accustomed to just going to buy grilled fish, the one grilling it is soaking it in some salt solution, which has cubes in there. Now, even then, adding extra oil. You pouring know the oil. Type of oil. You know, 
some of the, these things that happen when oil uh, gets into the fire and smokes, that smoke coming back onto the fish, a lot of bad compounds mm. get attached to the fish right. and you eat them, they can even end up causing problems in the DNA of people mm. and then causing cancer and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's better we do things um, our right own way. And way. another way is to learn to cook ourselves. Mm. We are all busy, but <laughs> I mean, if you ask me to choose between falling sick of one of these bad diseases and then living long mm. to like 70, 80 years and still being a strong man, I'll choose living long, which we'll is the wish the of other everybody. One. <laughs> but indirectly, we are choosing to, to, to die early. We forget the consequences. Exactly, because the things, if you ask old people, those who live long, what to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wise, I know you have so much to say, but as you can see, production team says our time is up. <laughs> so we'll continue another day. Right. This has been the Wild Lifestyle Show. Like I said earlier, your lifestyle plays a key role in your general health and well-being. So do well. Make a conscious effort to stay healthy. My beautiful wake up, my makeup, my nails were done by AJ Hair and Makeovers. You can find them at East Legon Oponglo. They share the same building as Echo Bank. My beautiful dress was designed by Loretta Unisex Designs. You can find them at Osus Kukum Limli and East Legon. Thank you for watching the Wild Lifestyle Show. My name is Helena. See you next week and stay healthy. Thank you.